Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. You're watching the In Deep on the Delta punching video, and believe me, we're going to get in deep into the punching technique. But before we do, I'd like to explain the format of this particular series of videos, and it is a series. We're going to have part one, part two, and part three. Today, the video that you'll be watching is an in-depth interview with Mark Lassane, and primarily we're going to be talking about how to find productive water, and Mark gives up just a ton of information on what he looks for, how much he looks visually, talks about electronics, everything. We're going to go into uh, great detail on locating productive water. That's what you'll be watching today. Tomorrow I will upload part two and that's going to be Mark again but what we're going to be doing is watching Mark in an actual fishing situation. He's going to run a couple of banks and Mark will be um, just kind of giving you the information uh, real time as he's fishing, what he's looking for, why he's doing it. He's going to talk about techniques. He's going to show you his punching rig. So you're going to get to watch Mark work a bank just as if he was fishing a tournament. That is going to be part two. We'll upload that video tomorrow. And the day after that, part three, I'm going to take over on that video. Uh, by then you're going to know what to look for, how to find the fish, uh, techniques, uh, uh, how to how to run banks and the third part will be talking about baits and rigging I'll give you some standard rigs I'll talk about Miller punch weights and and uh, which is something that I also use be, uh, besides a standard punch rig and I'll also go into some other um, alternative type punching techniques that you can use uh, here on the Delta that I think some of you will find interesting. So with that, guys, remember, three parts. Hope you watch them all, and I hope you enjoy them. Let's get into the interview with Mark Lesane. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining in. Uh, you're watching In Deep on the Delta, and today we're going to get in deep into the punching technique. Tonight, or today, whew, whatever it is, it is the daytime. Today I've got Mark Lesane on board. Mark, thanks, thanks Thank for you. coming I in. I appreciate it. And, you know, I know a lot of you guys out there uh, are new to bass fishing. Mark really needs no introduction, but I'm going to introduce him anyhow because uh, some of you may not know Mark. Mark, you own uh, Bass Angler Magazine? Yes, uh, owner and publisher of Bass Angler. Okay, and that seems like a full-time job, but also Mark is a very successful tournament angler. I know you're fishing uh, Wild West team and Wild West Pro-Am, and I, I know you're fishing the team because... Unfortunately, you've uh, I've donated a couple of uh, entry fees to you this year, but I got you one more time, so I'm going to get you okay. here in a couple of weeks. But you're you're running uh, what are Apex? Fishing Apex, yeah. Uh, also MLF. So uh, Apex is that new televised series from Wild West. Uh, pretty pretty fun events. So. Yeah. And if you want to know how Mark does in, in the tournaments, you can look on his website. You've got a website up there. I do. Uh, Easybass.com. It's also my name, MarkLesane.com, which is too hard to remember how to spell that so ezbass.com really easy just go right there and you can see what's going on how i'm doing you know look at and i'll give you guys a tip if you're looking to find mark in the standings start from the top and start looking down it'll, <laughs> it'll save you some time he's usually up there around the top somewhere so now so you got the magazine you've got uh, uh basically a full schedule of tournament fishing and you're guiding and i guide uh, so i'm gonna say i'm a part-time guy part-time uh, guy you know once a week sometimes two sometimes two times a week mm -hmm. um you know in between uh magazine and tournament fishing and and life uh, that makes you a busy man yeah and yeah. your guy let's uh, you're guiding primarily on Berryessa and and the delta yes okay. correct and for you guys that are, are watching the channel i know a lot of you guys are are watching the channel for information and mark let them know about you know i, I want to hit your guide service up just real quick Talk about what you can do for someone that, that's learning, how, how much you can improve their, um, their learning curve, and, and talk about the teaching as, aspect of what you're doing guiding. So, uh, you know, I own Bass Angler Magazine, which is a how-to nationwide bass fishing publication. So I'm really in-depth in helping people catch more fish. But obviously, some people come from out of town, they just want to go out and catch fish, which is fine. But most of the people I take out are you know beginners sometimes first time they ever caught a fish um, you know to intermediate anglers and once in a while some pros we go out and we can dissect 
the lake, if we go to Berryessa, or the delta, and we can fish. We can work on tides, mm -hmm. chasing the tides, what to do at a certain tide, how to fish a certain type of vegetation, how to fish a certain bait, you know, when to throw a buzz bait, when to throw a frog, when to punch, when to throw a chatter bait. You know, it can get as in depth as you like. And, and you know, I think especially on the Delta, you can learn in one day what it may take you several years to learn with an experienced guide. So just keep that in mind. And, and speaking as a as a retired guy, the one thing that, that I will inject into that, if you hire a guide, whether it's Mark or, or someone else, make sure you communicate with that guide what you're looking for. If you just want to come out and catch the biggest fish in the in the uh, river that's one thing but if you have a specific thing that you want to work on whether it's your casting or your punching or a technique sure then mark or whoever it is knows what you're after and they could really focus in on that and and really bring you along and, and help you out so we'll uh, put all that information up uh, in the in the remarks for the um Sounds video good. and let's get into it so we're going to talk about punching, and you know what? We'll go into everything from the rigs, the baits, the techniques. The um, I really, because I've got Mark on the boat, I want to talk to him about locating fish. We're going to talk about when to start, when you know where and how to start looking. Are, are you using electronics? Are you visually looking at things? We're going to talk a lot about time management, and for tournament anglers, time management is a thing that gets talked about for people that are out. Um, weekend angling time management doesn't maybe get a whole lot of attention but that's going to be what we're going to spend some time on and yeah. it depends on you know, when we talk about time management how much time you're uh, taking to look for spots how much time you're going to fish a certain spot uh, when to pull up when to when to stay all that kind of stuff now if it takes more than uh, the allotted amount of time more than 15 or 20 minutes i'm going to break this video up into a couple sections and in the second section i'll really go into just the rigging and the knots we don't need mark for that here we, we need mark here for the uh, uh, expertise on how to find fish and you know that's that's the thing about it. if you can't find fish you can't if you don't know where they are you can't catch them if there's no fish there you definitely can't catch and them. does that go for you too if there's no fish there, I can't even you catch can't, them. Okay, because, all right. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm wondering about that sometimes because you seem to catch fish all the time. But that's because... Yeah. That's because I'm, I'm fishing you, where the fish are. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> good to know. But the bottom line, guys, is your success when it comes to punching is going to be how much time and effort you put into it. I know it's, it's, it sounds like it's, it's just a big sloppy big fat guy going out throwing a sloppy bait into the water but there's a lot to it and we're going to get into that so for my first question mark is when do you start punching do you punch year round or are you waiting for like is it pre-spawn post-spawn are you waiting for a water temperature when do you start punching so i'm going to say the best time to punch is when it's hot and flat mm -hmm. is there a water temperature that you're looking for well it's hot hot, hot. and flat so the water is okay. going to be pretty warm it's right. going to be you know above it's going to be post spawn mm -hmm. and through through the fall okay um, with that with that said i've caught some of my biggest fish in february in the rain punching mats um so i i'll punch 12 months out of the year there are times when you're punching and you'll just catch a bunch of little ones where you need to adjust and mm -hmm. sometimes you get a bunch of little teeny fish up under the mat and they just tear your bait off and and you know and that and that's when you yeah. need to go searching other punch spots or other other techniques and that's the other thing to be aware of just because you're punching every fish you catch isn't a five pounder uh, you're right you have to you have to wade through small fish punching just like any other fish but with that being said punching is just an absolute maniac when it comes to picking up big fish it's it, a big fish technique it is it's yeah. like throwing a swim bait but you know what you can go throw a big hut at Clear Lake and you yeah. can still catch these right. guys okay that, it happens so punching can be surface vegetation. You can also punch offshore vegetation. Sure. But today, let's talk about uh, just punching through mats, uh, uh, surface vegetation. But talk a little bit about, you know, when you'll move off out of the mats into the offshore vegetation. So the offshore vegetation, I need to have some water on it, and it needs to be loose enough where I think fish can be inside it. So I'm looking for somewhat of a canopy, in probably three to six foot of water where I think the fish can be down in there. Um, and uh, the type of vegetation, I'm looking for uh, Aladea 
or it's Brazilian pond weed. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, it looks like hydrilla, but it's not. It it just looks like that. Mm -hmm. That is the best offshore outside edge vegetation to punch. And are, are you looking for lanes in it or are you just looking for clumps? And when you find these big spots of vegetation, are you fishing specific areas in that or are you just covering the whole area? I have, you know, you can kind of think of it like you're going down a bank. Like if you go to Shasta or Orville, there's trees, millions of trees, but there's a point there with a tree on it, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a point with some vegetation on it uh, and that's key. I mean, a big straight long bank with you know, with vegetation and punching down the whole bank, you know, you can go do that, um, but you're not going to catch very many and they're probably not going to be big. You'll notice if you go down a big long straight bank and you're punching down through the bank uh, and then boom, you catch one and you notice that, oh, it's a little bit different. May have, we may have been sticking out with a little current coming around it. Something's going to be a little bit different, especially where you get the bigger fish. Let's talk about how do you how do you find when you're out on the delta there's 1500 miles of waterway how much of your um, time is spent visually looking compared to using electronics and I also want you to talk about the type of electronics that that you find most helpful and a lot of the guys that are out there that may be looking for electronics to use on the delta do you use side scan do you find that you know helpful do you use just down sonar i know you do you have used the aqua, aqua view and whether it's the uh what's what is uh, garmin calls it the um live scope live scope or, or one of those things so talk about how much how much of your energy is spent visually looking and how much of your energy is spent using electronics and what electronics do you like to use so i i use garmin i use uh uh echo map 12 inch here and I have 12 inch on the front and the back. I, I think one of the biggest keys for me is that with the Garmin, I can color shade the depth. So what I'll do in the Delta is I'll color shade, you know, one to three foot and then, you know, three to five and then five to 10. And then that way I can see the colors and I can see when those colors are close together, that means I have a deeper drop off. And then I'm looking around for vegetation on those drop offs. So I will use that, I'll use the map, I'll look around, and then I will, if I'm practicing for a tournament, I'll go and look and I'll go drive by, I'll idle by water and I'll look for how much depth is right on the edge of the vegetation. And I wanna see a couple, three feet. It's best to do this at low tide, and then you'll know mm -hmm. at high tide, yeah. you'll even have more water. But if right. you have a couple, three foot right on that edge at low tide, I know that that area can hold fish. You know, it may be a straight bank, it may not be just right, but I can go down, I can find, mark all of these mm -hmm. spots, mm -hmm. and I just kind of yeah. mark a little area, and then I'll come back and I'll pick that area of where that would be the best. I may fish the whole thing in practice, yeah. but in the tournament, I'm gonna pick the best spot of that. And you were also telling me you like to have a couple feet of water. I know some people say all I need is eight, 10 inches of water. You like a couple feet of water over your surface vegetation and you'll fish all the way from a couple feet out to maybe even if there's eight or 10 feet of water. 10, 15 foot. You'll, um, you'll punch that, that deep sure. water. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like punching the really deep water when the tide is slow. Uh -huh. Either, you know, low switch slack, high switch slack. Um, because when, if it's deep, that means there's a lot of current running through there. So the, the bigger fish yeah. are, are not gonna be there with a big, strong current. Yeah. Do you like to fish those smaller patches or a lot of times you'll find a 100 yard patch of that vegetation. Does it matter to you what your, the size of the patch that you're fishing? If I'm, if I'm looking for bigger quality fish, mm -hmm. I'll find the small patches, mm -hmm. the best. Small, small patches with some deep water. One thing I'm gonna break in. So, and this is important because a lot of the guys, you, you come into a small patch, maybe it's the size of the boat. Two or three questions here before we go on. How many punch casts do you throw in about how, are they every two feet, every four feet? How many casts and how long do you stay in that area that's say the size of a boat? Every three to five foot and just a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. So it's a run and gun okay. kind of thing for me. So the guys that are new to it, if you're fishing these patches where you see that you know the tules are have maybe pulled in some hyacinth and it's made a nice little patch, great places to fish. But don't sit there and fish them for 20 minutes. Um, like Mark said, every 
two, three, four, five feet, you're only going to throw maybe five or six casts that's, in there at the that's most. That's it. And if they're there, they're there. Now, if you catch a fish, do you throw back in? Oh, sure. Okay. Sure. You'll, yeah. you'll, you'll if, throw I, if I catch one, I'm going to go down. I'll go down the mat. Um, but generally, I won't turn around and fish it and fish it and fish it. It's not like Florida, you Florida guys, you know, because they'll hit a bank and they'll go up and down, up and down the mm -hmm. bank where it drives me crazy. Right. Me, I, I bam, 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 I hit the bank. And then if I caught a good one out of it, I'm not gonna turn right around and fish it. I'm gonna go mm -hmm. fish a couple other spots and I'll come back, right. I'll let it rest and I'll come back. Okay, and let it rest. That's important because that's another thing we talked about. And um, especially here on the Delta, and my feeling is the fish don't normally school up in huge schools. If you find a mat and you catch a couple of good fish off of it, that's a good deal. But don't expect to uh, say you're up at um, Clear Lake or Maloney's or something, find a point where you can catch 15, 20 fish right. and stay there. So keep moving. But you, you said something that, that uh, is really important to me too. You might find that mat, catch a nice fish under it, you move on. That mat could reset, or, or in my opinion, I like to go back to that mat because I know it holds fish. There's something under there a reason why you're catching fish maybe there's a log that you don't see maybe there's it's just a spot that holds bait because of a current or right. something so you will go back to that spot maybe once or twice and again only fish it for five six casts if, and try a, to pull if it was a fish. really big fish i may yeah. go back five or six times if it's a tournament situation i may go back several times so a couple things one you asked about electronics um one is I do use my Garmin. Mm -hmm. um, I don't use side scan. Mm -hmm. I don't use down scan the Delta. I use just standard sonar, and all I'm doing is seeing how deep it is right next to the edge. Okay, so you're not looking underneath. I'm not. I do now. If there are sometimes, um, and, and it's kind of rare because a lot of the mats will have a lot of junk hanging down where you really can't see. But there's a few mats out there that are eight or 10 foot deep mm -hmm. where you can take your live scope and I've actually scanned underneath it and saw fish mm -hmm. and I could throw my, my punch rig down and watch it go down to the bottom and then watch the fish come and hit mm -hmm. it. So bottom line on that, if you are a hardcore tournament angler, you may wanna you know, put out a little money for, for some upgraded electronics. But for the average guy that's coming out here visually and just, uh, from time on the water, knowing what you're looking for is probably your best friend. You have a good a good mapping system. I mean, you know, Garmin has a mm -hmm. couple of units that are not very expensive, still with great mapping, and just a regular just tells you how deep it is. So, and then and you're you know you're right. good with that. Um, yeah, you know, live scope is awesome technology. Um, I use it in the Delta just a little bit, you know, for some deeper fish. But most of the time, I'm just using regular sauna. Okay. Another time management question. You find one of these banks. It's a great bank. It's, let's say, rock with hyacinth out 8 to 10 feet, and you've got 4 to 6 feet of water. Perfect bank. And that hyacinth um, is maybe 100 yards long. Do you... How much time do you spend fishing that 100 yards? And do you fish... Do you start it and go all the way through, or do you maybe fish a little bit pull up quickly and, and, and fish another little spot in it? Or how much time would you spend on a spot when you're not catching fish? Well, I, you know, I fish really fast, mm -hmm. <clears throat> especially punching. I'm punching every three to five feet. Um, I'll punch in, punch close to the boat, punch in, you know, back and forth. I'll fish that entire stretch. Okay, you will fish yeah, I will, until I, until I spend some time and figure out where these fish are, um, where in, they're in the where they are on that stretch. So you, what you're saying is, out of a hundred yards, there may be two or three spots that hold fish, maybe because of a depression or something. And you're going to learn where those are. And, and if you go back, you're going to just fish a ten foot section, a ten foot section, a ten foot section later in the day. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, and sometimes it just seems random where you need to fish the whole thing. So in the Delta, we have channel swings. There's lots and lots of channel swings all over. Now, when you're fishing these, whether you're punching or throwing a chatterbait or drop shotting or senko, there's gonna be places in the channel swing, you know, where these fish are gonna be. You know, sometimes, say the current's going this way, sometimes they'll be against this bank, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll be here where the current's twisting, mm -hmm. sometimes they'll be here where the current's twisting. So when you, when you go and you fish, you know, four or five of these channel swings, you'll go, oh, well, they're on this front side. Mm -hmm. So then after a little while, if they're all like that until the tide switches, mm -hmm. you can go run run those. Right, right. If you catch a fish, 
be real cognizant of where that fish came out of if it's on a bank that's getting push having water pushed into it or if it's a protected bank where the water is is being skirted so just figure out yeah. where they're at and then work to duplicate that so you know what we're going to do mark we're going to get ready to go fishing and we'll find one of these small patches and i'm going to put you up on the boat and i'll tell you if mark can catch a fish today uh it's going to be great because it, hot, flat, it's and 100 hot, degrees, flat, so. <laughs> 100 degrees, and the tide is just bottomed out. But I want you guys to watch Mark in a small patch, and we'll see exactly how aggressively you fish that, and how many casts you work in there. And if you if you see something on there that say, "Hey, I'm doing this because of this, that, or the other thing," you can you can add that into it. And what do you say we uh, pack up and see if we can't catch a fish? Sure, sure. I want to I want to oh, inject oh, one, one one more. thought. So, and I, I see this all the time. I take people out, they go back to the spot time after time mm -hmm. after time after time. When you're out fishing, right, and you go to a bank, after you fish that bank, maybe leave it alone for a while, a week, two weeks, three weeks, because pressure is the, I won't say the worst thing, but pressure is the thing that causes these fish to shut off the most. And for them to leave, you've probably had some of those that was my favorite spot for years and now there's no fish there. Well, you went there, you know, 500 times and now them fish are just like, ah, stop, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. um, so pressure really makes a difference. That's what, uh, you know, I've been asked many times, and I, or, you know, people have said, man, I'd like to know where you're fishing. Well, you know what? A lot of times <laughs> I will launch the boat and I'll fish around that area for that day. Next day I'll go launch somewhere else. People don't want to hear that. I, you know, that, there, I mean, yes, there's little spots that are better than others, but the, the delta fish yeah. is big and there's fish all over the delta. You just have to work it, find the right tide that they're going to bite at. <laughs> well, we're going to find the nearest pad that we can fish that's good to explain what's going on. We're going to go from there. Okay. Let's